All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Betty Pilotti, and I am a uh, PhD student at the University of Arkansas under Dr. Cameron Murray. Um, and today I'll be talking about our research and the development of BCSA cement uh, soft consolidating concrete for structural repairs. This research is being done at the University of Arkansas at our brand new Civil Engineering Research and Education Center, as we call it, CREC. Um, and we'd, we'd like to thank RapidSet for um, providing us with their RapidSet cement. And this work is being done um, as our part of our uh, Army Corps of Engineers URDIC project our, with the Geotechnical and Structural Laboratory there. Okay, so as a small background to SCC, um, SCC was developed in the 80s and 90s in Japan as what they then called self-compacting concrete. So it's a concrete that balances three main characteristics, which are deformability, passing ability, and stability. So deformability is the ability of the SCC to fill and um, flow through formwork and then consolidate itself under its own self-weight, so no vibration needed. Passing ability is the ability of the SEC to flow through the densely reinforced areas of, say, a beam or a column or any structure. And then stability has two main concepts in it. So that there's dynamic stability and um, static stability. So dynamic stability is the resistance of the SEC to segregation when it's during placement, so as it's flowing through formwork and reinforcement. And then there's static stability, which is tested with the column segregation method, um, as you see in this picture. And that's the resistance of the SEC to segregation, separation, and bleeding um, after placement. I'll mention that deformability is measured with slump flow. Passing ability is measured with quite a few tests, but what we used in this research was the J-ring. Um, and then stability statically is uh, measured with column segregation. What we were looking for in terms of deformability and slump flow was that we had more than 20 inches of slump flow, but the more the better with little segregation. And then with passing ability, we wanted our J-ring results to be within an inch of our slump flow to make sure that there was no visible blocking. So develop, to develop a SEC mix design, it's a little bit different than your normal um, conventionally vibrated concrete. And it's all about basically two main um, ratios. So we wanted to balance our water to powder ratio in this um, powder type SCC. So um, by powder at the beginning, this was only BCSA cement. And then we wanted to balance our fine and coarse aggregate ratios, so one to one essentially, or as close to it as possible. We tweaked these ratios a little bit to achieve the fresh properties that we liked. So I'd like to thank Dr. Brescher for going over a lot of why we would use BCSA cement. Um, that takes, helps me with time a little bit. Um, so what we started off with was a base Portland cement SCC mixture. And with that, we had a 0.37 water cement ratio, and then we liked the fresh and hardened properties that we achieved with it. And so that's what we kind of based our, our um, mixtures off of. So we wanted to make sure that we achieved similar results to our base mixture. And with that, we ended up with three uh, base mixtures, I'll call them. Um, they were all cement mixtures of water cement ratios of 0 0.44, 0 0.46, and 0.48. As you can see, we've got similar cement contents, similar coarse aggregate contents, but with a higher water cement ratio, we've got more water um, and th therefore less sand. We used the same high range um, dosage, and then our citric acid solution we used as a set retarder, and that five fluid ounces per 100 pounds of cement gave us about an hour or so of working time. And to go over what Dr. Besher already went over, um, we use BCSA in this research because it's rapid hardening, has early age, high early age compressive strength, and is shrinkage neutral. So in terms of fresh properties, we started again with our 0% fly ash replacement. So we, that's our, those are our base mixtures. And we use the fly ash replacement not because of any expectation of any pozzolanic reaction. We we're using it merely to maintain our powder content while reducing our cement content. So with this, we have five different fly ash replacements. And what we were looking for in terms of fresh properties with our fly ash replacements was that we wanted to maintain or improve our fresh properties, so our slump flow, J-ring, and stability, um, while not losing a whole lot of our compressive strength. So as you can see here, um, as we added more and more fly ash, we, generally speaking, increased our slump flow. Um, some of the results are a little bit weird. We probably mixed on a warmer or colder day. 
And then we can look at our hardened properties. These are our seven day hardened properties. I'm choosing seven days here to be a, almost a comparison to 28 days in a Portland cement mix. So as you can see, after about 15% fly ash replacement, we start to, that's when we start to lose a lot of our compressive strength. But before that, they remain, we kind of maintain or slightly lose some amount of compressive strength, which is expected, but we are able to reduce our cement content. Going forward with um, the research, we chose to go forward with a 0.46 water cement ratio with a 10 and 15 replacement as well as our base mixtures. And we chose the 10 and 15 percent replacement because we liked the balance of increasing or maintaining our fresh properties while not losing a whole lot of our compressive strength. So when we look at the extreme early age um, compressive strength, so it's something that I'll note here is that with this extreme early age, so I'd say one day and before, mixed temperature and ambient curing temperature have a huge impact on our compressive strength. But generally speaking with this, um, as we decrease our water cement ratio, generally speaking, we're increasing our compressive strength. And then we can go ahead and extend the, this, these curves out to 28 days. And you can see that we're following the same pattern that with a lower water cement ratio, we are increasing our compressive strength. And then our two fly ash replacements, our 10 and 15%, are behaving very similarly to our 0.48 water cement ratio. And then we can look at some of our drying shrinkage. So something that's very important with a repair is that it's low shrinkage because we want to make sure that that bond is really good. So something, to, something interesting about these results is that our mixtures with the lowest um, early age compressive strength had the highest um, expansion here, where the positive end of this graph is expansion. We can extend this out to 28 days, and the, the negative side, although it says expansion means um, shrinkage, but we can extend that out to 28 days, and we can see that our BCSA mixtures are shrinking towards neutrality and that if our base uh, Portland cement mixture here is um, still shrinking. So now let's talk about a potential like real world application of this, the whole point of this project, and that's as a structural repair. So the, what we thought, what we started with at the beginning of this was what happens to say a bridge or a girder that um, gets damaged in several ways. So maybe it's a flexural region, so the bottom of the beam is damaged, or maybe it's an inner placement repair, so um, where an abutment is, where the um, girder meets the abutment, maybe that gets damaged. So we scaled that down to a lab scale, what we could do easily in our lab, and we came up with a beam that was 8 by 16 with four number sixes there at the bottom, two number threes at the top, and then number three stirrups for shear. So what we did was we flipped this cage then upside down, similarly, similarly to what they've already done at OU, and we cast just normal Portland cement concrete. This was to act as our substrate or what would be existing concrete in our, um, in our bridge type, our damaged bridge example. So what we did was then chip out um, our existing concrete to create a rough surface. Um, Hydro demolished it, and then we flipped it back upside, um, back right side up, and placed new rebar, and then um, used a funnel to place our SCC. So the most exciting thing I think I've ever done in the lab so far has been watching the SCC flow down my beam and then up through our um, relief holes there. I think that I kind of like squealed a little bit when it got to the very end of the relief hole and I saw aggregates coming out. Okay, so we can talk about some very preliminary results here. So, so far we've done four of our beams, our 12 foot beams, and um, we've got two controls. Those are Portland cement concrete. Um, we will let those cure for 28 days. Um, I'll note that the substrate was also cured for 28 days. And then we've got our flexural repair, so the bottom of the beam, like I've talked about before, um, that one was cured for seven days to simulate a 28 day Portland cement type strength, and then a four hour repair. So we can focus in on the elastic region of all four of our beams, and we can see that they behave um, identically. So same um, cracking load for all four of them, and then we've basically got the exact same load deflection behavior. And we can focus more on the failure region of these graphs, and we can see that we've got um, our four-hour repair fails at a lower um, 
load than our seven day and our controls. And I'll talk a lot about that in a little bit here. But then we can see that our seven day and Portland, and Portland cement controls, um, they behave identically essentially. So then we can look through um, what actually happened. These beams were loaded with third point loading. So we were looking for a flexural failure here. And that's what we, received, that's what we got for our seven day repair and our 28 day repair. So we loaded them. And as we loaded them, we got well distributed flexural cracks um, straight up and down from the bottom. And then at the end of the test, we, it failed ultimately with concrete crushing. We can look at our four hour repair. And so with our four hour repair, the day that we mixed and placed, it was much colder than we anticipated. So we had a colder mix temperature and colder ambient curing temperature that significantly affected our concrete strength. So this concrete wasn't as strong as we should have, uh, that it should have been um, just based on uh, the curing conditions. But we'll look at it anyway. And so we started off with diagonal tension cracks that started with our support locations and then continued up through our repair material. In an area with higher shear, um, shear force, the cracks then propagated along the interface, ending finally with continuing on through the substrate. We hypothesized that if this concrete was a little bit stronger, so if we had a um, better mixed temperature or warmer ambient conditions, we would have ended up with a flexural failure as anticipated, not a shear failure like this. So as we continue on with this research, this is, um, these are just preliminary results that I'm sharing. We'll do other ages of the, these flexural repairs that I described earlier, and we'll, do, um, we'll repeat our four hour and seven day um, beams. We'll also do in replacement repairs, like I mentioned before, and we'll continue doing characterization tests like MOR, MOE, UPV, and bulk resistivity.